right, so welcome back everybody. Uh, in this uh, video today, we're gonna be going over how to use a military protractor. Uh, it's a description. Uh, some of the things that Stoker does uh, to set up a protractor. Maybe it's something new that uh, you haven't considered before. Being on over how to plot a known point on a map. And then we're gonna go over some of the uh, second and third order effects of what can happen if we're not precise uh, when we're using our protractor. And then we'll move on and finish up with how to pl actually plot a grid coordinate and then how to determine a grid azimuth from a known point to where we're trying to go as well as determine a distance. And that should finish it up. Uh, if you like uh, the video, please feel free to like and subscribe, comment down below uh, if you think we missed anything or if you have any questions and we'll continue on this conversation. All right, so let's uh, take a closer look at our protractor. Uh, as you know, or you may or may not know, there are different uh, models and styles of protractors that are out there. Uh, some are round. Um, I particularly don't like those myself. I like having, being able to have a straight edge. And then you do have a couple of models that are square. Uh, some of them will just have the, the black writing in black like this one, and some other ones will have some writing in red. Uh, the benefit to those uh, for some people is that they will show you your back azimuth or your reverse azimuth. Uh, which can come in handy, but if you can do some simple math, you don't need it. This is probably the industry standard for uh, using military maps. So on the outside of uh, my protractor, I have a scale that reads in mils from zero all the way back around to 6400. Again, you know, when we're using, uh, when we're doing land navigation, you know, we're not going to be concerned about mils. Mills are a really precise minute of angle difference. Uh, as it relates to a 360 degree circle uh, that's primarily going to be used for precision shooting or directing indirect fire. The inner scale is the one that we're looking at now when we're doing land navigation and it reads in degrees from zero all the way around to three, 360. And you always want to make sure that zero is at the top and 90 is at the right. The easiest way to tell that if you uh, can't see that 90s on the right is if you can read the writing on your protractor you can know that it's flipped right if that protractor is flipped upside down it may look like it's right because you got zero at the top uh, but you can see the 270s on the right and I, I can't read it so all you have to do and just make sure you can read that writing so in the top left hand uh, corner of my protractor I have a scale for 1 to 50,000 map in the bottom left hand corner I have a scale for a 1 to 100,000 map and in the bottom right I have uh, actually two scales built into one one's for 1 to 25 and then one's uh, for 1 to 250 and maybe you played with uh, maps on your computer you know that the closer you zoom in the closer you zoom in the more detail that you can see and so once we get down to a 1 to 25,000 map you're going to get a lot of detail but your focus area is a lot smaller Whereas if you zoom all the way back out to 1 to 50, 1 to 100, or 1 to 250, the more surface area you're, you're going to see uh, as, as it relates. So most military maps that you're going to find are, are going to be a 1 to 50 map, and that's what we'll be using here in a minute. So you can see, you know, on this uh, white background here, it's really easy to see my degrees. But if I take my map and, and just plop this thing down, And I put my protractor back down on my map. It can become extremely hard to read my degrees. So I'm going to show you a trick uh, to use to help set up your protractor so that it's easier to read. All you have to do is move this paper out of the way so it doesn't get stuck. Then I'm going to take my protractor and I'm going to flip it upside down. And I'm going to take some tape. And it can be any kind of tape you got laying around. Painter's 3M tape, masking tape, whatever it is. Just some tape and tape it down. Maybe you have uh, some tricks that you've picked up over the years for how you use a protractor. Feel free to comment down below and let us all know what you're doing out there.
clean this up a little bit for now and then I'll go offline and get it nice and cleaned up for us. Now when I put my mat back down and I try to read my degrees, man, it really pops out a whole lot more. So it's really easy to read those degrees now. So I'm gonna show you something else. Uh, I'll get a protractor set up for something else that I, I'll do from time to time. Cause again, you know, I, I don't use mills. I don't care about mills. Man, I'm never gonna use them for my navigation. So I can, because you can see, right? If I take my protractor and I try to stuff it in a book or something, it's, it'll stick out. Sometimes that comes in handy. Uh, sometimes it's kind of a pain depending on what kind of notebook I'm trying to put it in because protractors are a little fragile uh, and they will break on you. So you can, one, another trick that you can do, and I'll get one set up, is take a razor blade and just cut these mills off. Just use the, the black line as uh, your guiding line and then cut that thing off and I'll show you what that looks like here in, a, in just a minute. We'll be right back. Alright, so we got our protractor all set up here, and as you can see, man, it's a lot smaller, isn't it? Look at that thing. It'd be at least a full inch shorter. So the benefit to that is if I take a standard notebook and I slide it in there, it's protected. It fits like a glove, right? It's like a glove. Okay. Show you again, that larger one, you can catch on all kinds of things, you can end up breaking, falling out a little bit easier. The only downside to cutting your mills off is you, that you do lose about an inch uh, when it comes to trying to draw a line on your mat. Alright, maybe you got uh, some tricks that you have picked up. Again, if you got any, uh, let us know down in the comments below. So we're going to take our protractor now and we'll go ahead and throw it on our mat. And I'll go into a lot more detail in another video about how to read a mat. But for the purposes of for the purposes of understanding a bridge format, you always read a map right and up, right and up. So you can see uh, my grid scores here, three, three, the grid lines, three, 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 four, three, five, three, six, three, seven, three, eight, three, nine, it's reading to the right, and then it uh, moves up. Your eight, your nine, zero, 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 one, zero, two, zero, three, and so forth. So you always read a map right and up. Now let's say I was trying to find uh, what the grid coordinate is for there's a building here in 3799 and I want to know what that grid coordinate is. I want to take my protractor and make sure again that zero is at the top, nine is at the right, that I can read my protractor itself. And I'm gonna set it on the on the left side of 37 and on the top side of 99. And then I can just slide my protractor to the right until that black building is directly underneath the black vertical line on my protractor. Easiest way to tell if you're having issues, just slide it up. Right, your protractor is translucent so you can see right through it. And if that black building falls directly on that black line, uh, then you know that you're set up right. So it looks like that's 374, right? So I'm reading to the right first, so that's 374. Yeah, it looks like it's 3740. Alright, so 3740. And get back down here. And now I'm going to read up. Okay, nice and perfect. 9932. So all I did, uh, you know, when I'm writing out my grid coordinates is give myself an eight-digit grid coordinate. Right? So there we are. And I'm going to cut this right in half. Of course, grid coordinates uh, on a military map are using the metric scale. And so this gives me a 10-meter plot. I know uh, with certainty that that building that on that map that we just... Uh, 
look at is at 374-0932 within 10 meters. A lot of GPS devices out there are going to give you an 8 digit grid coordinate. Maybe it was 374-299-325 uh, and that's going to get you to uh, 1 meter or you know roughly 3 feet which is really really precise. Uh, but when it comes to doing land navigation and trying to uh, plot maps or plot coordinates on a map or figure out a coordinate on a map, you're never going to be able to plot uh, a 10 digit grid coordinate and I'll show you why here in a minute. Uh, but if you weren't uh, understanding prior to, let me break this down a little bit more. So again, we had 3799, right? 3799. I know that's this grid square right here. And that's a thousand meters, just over 3,000 feet. So I want to get a little bit closer than that. My next scale in the metric is by adding one more digit. So that's 374993. And so that's going to get me, right, so four digit is a thousand meters. So next up is 100 meters. And that's where we're at now. So 374993. It's going to get you within 100 meters, you know, about 330 feet. Uh, pretty close, but if you're looking for something very specific, you need to get a little bit closer than that. And then that's when we go to an eight digit grid coordinate, just like we plotted earlier, 3740-9932. So that's eight digit, oh, my bad. That's a four digit, six digit, eight digit, 10 digit. Pretty easy. All right, so why can't I draw a 10, uh, digit grid coordinate. So let's say I had uh, those three, seven, four, zero, six, nine, nine, three, two, one. Why can't I, why can't I plot that? And I'll show you why. The reason is because no matter what you're using, whether it's a, a pen like this one, a, a, you know, a fine pencil, Whatever it is, that point that you're going to mark on your map is bigger than what you think it is. So just in this case, you know, if we look down at our scale, that's almost 50 meters. That little that that little dot, that little dot is 50 meters, and that's huge. And let me tell you why. <coughs> And that's why you want to use the finest point uh, pen that you, or pencil that you can use on your map. And once I start actually drawing on a map here in a minute, I'm going to go get one. I've been drawing on a piece of paper, you know, using pens a little bit easier. But if that little point is 50 meters, right, so that's over 150 feet. 150 feet that right off the bat, I can be to the left, to the right forward to the back in any different direction and let's say I was using a larger uh, pen and you know my point was really big some people like to draw on the maps really big and you see that guy right there man it's a hundred meters a hundred meters that little point is a hundred meters that is huge man if I'm trying to find a, a, a box if I'm trying to find a, an ammo can if I'm trying to find you know, something that's a little smaller, that's going to be harder to find. You know, 100, 100 meters, that's more than a football field. It's going to take me a really long time to be able to find that. And so that's why I want to use just the finest point. If I can get just the finest point, even with that pen, and I take my protractor and I look back on it, I still measure 25 meters. So this is all important for a variety of reasons. Obviously, I want to get as close to perfect as I can get. I want to get as close to, listen to me, friends. You want to get as close to perfect on your map as you can. Because once you start moving, once you start moving towards uh, your destination, all those variables are just going to compound. So if I'm a little off now, I'm going to be more off later. Let me show you another reason why that's important. 
can't see. Close enough. Uh, so let's say um, I was moving off in the wrong direction, and my wrong direction was 10 degrees, which is you know, just 10 degrees off. It's no big deal, right? Didn't seem like a big deal, but let's see how far off this is. So using my scale on my protractor, pretty handy feature, right? That's a thousand meters right there. It's really easy to read. That's about one. About 3,800 meters, right? But if I moved out 3,800 meters and I was 10 degrees off, I'm gonna be a solid 500 meters off in the wrong direction. 500 meters after just moving, you know, about four clicks. 500 meters. Like the metric scale is really easy. If I'm 10 degrees off, if I move a thousand meters, I'm going to be a hundred meters off. And it's absolutely craziness to think and, and shows the importance of why I have to be perfect. I, have, I, I need to be as close to perfect as I can when I'm using my protractor and I'm using my map to ensure that once I start moving, I've taken care of all the variables that I can so I can be moving at the right azimuth. So I hope that makes sense and I hope that shows you why, man, why you need to uh, understand the, the impact that a small degree uh, of failure or not being perfect uh, when you're plotting your points and determining your uh, grid azimuths and uh, things of this nature, like the impact that it can have as you move off. Because you know, if you're three, if you're 500 meters off, man, you're never going to find what you're looking for. Right, so the other thing that we can do is use a protractor to, de to determine uh, to determine what a, an azimuth is from a starting point to another point. So for the sake of this demonstration, we'll assume that we're at this building in 3598, right in this grid square, 3598. And we're going to plot to 36750022. So I read right to 36 and then up to 00. zero. Again, that's 36750022. I'm gonna take my protractor again, I'm gonna put it on the to the left side of 36 and on the top side of 00. zero. And then I'm gonna slide my protractor over until 75 is on the 36 grid line. And then we'll uh, read up to 2, 2. And this is where it gets a little tricky. Uh, again, because we know that the width of my pin mark that I'm going to make, and, and when I would do this for real, of course, uh, if I was out in the field, I'd be using a pencil, but I want to make it a little bit easier for you to see. So I'm going to be using a pen here. So when I go to mark 2, 2, I know it's going to be in between the 2 and the halfway point between 2 and 3. So it's not going to be quite there, and I want to slide my protractor over before I make my mark, and then bring my protractor back, 75, and then 2, 2, alright, so she's right, the bottom right hand corner of that mark is directly underneath the black vertical line on my protractor for my scale. And that's right where 2 2 is. And then to help make it a little bit easier to find, you can always take a larger circle and then mark the point like that. That way, when you go back to find it, you can do that pretty easy. 
So we're shooting an azimuth uh, from this building. So I'm gonna take my protractor. I'm gonna line it up from where I am to where I'm going. And now, because I'm moving uh, from this building to this point, I don't really want to draw a bunch of lines all up in the area where I'm moving at. So I'm gonna take my pen and I'm just gonna mark out here. Now I can take my protractor and the center point of my protractor, I can put it right down on that building, 3598. And now here's where this vertical and horizontal uh, line on my protractor comes in handy because I can make sure that it's perpendicular to the vertical and the horizontal grid lines on my map. Now all I have to do is just find where my uh, line that I drew for my azimuth intersects my protractor and it's at 35, 36, 37, 38 degrees. Alright, so now I know that I'm moving at 38 degrees and that's a grid azimuth. Uh, I'll go into a later time as far as how to figure out uh, how to change that to a grid azimuth. Now I need a distance. So to figure out my distance, I can do a couple things. I, if it was less than a thousand meters, I could try to use uh, the scale of my protractor. However, this one is a little bit further uh, than that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a pen, a piece of paper, and I'm gonna line this up, tip on right where I'm coming from to where I'm going and I'll just put a hash mark. And that's how an easy way to measure a straight line. Now again, I mean I could try to use my protractor again. It's probably gonna take a little bit longer to measure out depending on how far I'm coming. Or I can flip my map over. So I'm on my scale. Since I'm over 2,000 meters, I'm going to slide this back. So here's my zero mark. So I'm going to slide this back until my measurement line is on an even uh, 1,000 meters. And then I'm going to read back. So that's 100, 200. We tried it 300. So that's 20, 300 kilometers. Now I'm ready to figure out what my pace count is, uh, convert my grid azimuth to a magnetic azimuth, and start moving out. All right, so uh, a lot of ground covered in this video. Hopefully uh, you learned something. Again, uh, please feel free to like and subscribe so you can stay up to date on all the upcoming videos that we'll be going over. And uh, as always, if you have a comment, uh, leave one down below and we'll carry on this conversation. Until then, we'll see you.